One of the more unique aspects of Frank Herbert's sci-fi saga Dune is the concept of a society which has long since banned all manner of artificial intelligence and computing technology. The punishment for developing or possessing even simple devices resembling human-like functions is death. This is in accord with the supreme commandment enforced throughout the Imperium, thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind. This element of the Duneverse contributes to the author's intention to focus on human innovation and adaptation. One of the areas in which we see this demonstrated is the local Fremen population of Arrakis. Their strength and ingenuity is revealed by the many tools they skillfully utilize and those they have developed in order to survive and even thrive amid the harsh conditions of the desert planet. While their high-tech garment, known as a still suit, is certainly the pinnacle of Fremen engineering, in this video I'd like to examine the lore surrounding a few of the other fascinating gadgets necessary for those who venture into the deep desert. If you'd like to learn more about the still suit, be sure to check out my video on the subject. I'll leave a link in the description below. Because simple magnetic compasses won't work on Arrakis, a unique survival tool that is necessary on this planet is a device called the Paracompass. When surrounded by the desert sea, it is crucial to find a safe haven from the patrolling sandworms and fierce storms by taking shelter among the rocky outcroppings scattered across the surface of Arrakis. The planet's magnetic field is unstable, requiring this device which contains an acid-based power pack and determines direction by local magnetic anomaly. When traveling in the deep desert, a special map of the planet's surface, called a sink chart, is especially useful as it references the most reliable paracompass routes between places of refuge. Another tool that the Fremen use to conserve water is the still tent. Similar in concept to the still suit, the still tent is a specialized shelter designed to collect and filter the body's moisture that is released within so that it can be reclaimed. The tent itself is made with the same micro sandwich fabric used in still suits. The shelter is small but can expand to accommodate its occupants. Usually placed under a layer of sand, the tissue fabric needs to be airtight so as to keep the ambient moisture from one's breath, sweat, or tears inside the tent, where the special fabric filters the collected moisture into catch pockets, where it can then be consumed as potable water. While the specialized suit and tent are a marvel of engineering and resourcefulness, they are a stark reminder of the harsh realities of living on Arrakis where one can't afford to waste even trace amounts of water. There are several other gadgets to be used in conjunction with sheltering in a still tent, such as a proximity detector to stay alerted to possible threats, and a breathing device called a sand snork, which pumps surface air into the sand-covered tent. If enough sand has covered the tent due to a passing sandstorm, it can make exiting the makeshift shelter difficult. The Static Compaction Tool is a handy device that realigns the grains of sand, immobilizing them to form a hole in the sand wall, enabling the occupants to exit through the static-packed sand with relative ease. If the Fremen need to travel great distances across the desert, there are other specialized tools they manufacture to aid them in utilizing the great sandworms for such transportation. Their training and knowledge of both the desert and the sandworms themselves contributes greatly to the success of riding one, but without their tools, the attempt would be all the more deadly and ultimately futile. To aid them in this perilous endeavor, the Fremen deploy a device called a thumper. A thumper is a short stake with a spring-loaded clapper on one end. It is driven into the sand and performs a thumping action to summon Shai Hulud, the great sandworm. When the catch is released, the device pounds, emitting a rhythmic vibration that attracts the worms. Some can be fitted with a candle to act as a timer in case a delayed activation is needed. When the candle is lit, a set amount of time would pass until it burned out, after which the catch would release and trigger the thumper's rhythmic pounding. A thumper can not only be used to draw the worm's attention for the purpose of riding, but also to distract and divert its attention elsewhere if needed. When attracting a worm for riding with the thumper, the Fremen then put themselves in the proper position alongside its path and use long hooks, called maker hooks, to mount the beast. 
Though the sandworm's armor-like scales are virtually indestructible, they can be manipulated. Using the hook to lift up the scale, the worm instinctively rotates so that the vulnerable section of its armor is at the highest point from the desert floor. As long as the scales are manipulated in this fashion, it prevents the worm from submerging. Besides these, there are other tools that would be wise to take along when traveling in the desert. If you had access to water, you would typically transport it in a liter john, a one liter container made of high density, shatterproof plastic with a positive seal. Other helpful items would include binoculars, recaths, which are body function tubes linking the human waste disposal system to the cycling filters of a still suit, extra filt plugs, which are nose filter units worn with a still suit to capture moisture from the exhaled breath a Baradai pistol, a static charge dust gun developed on Arrakis and used for laying down a large dye marker on the sand, a fire pillar, a pie rocket used for signaling across the open desert, and finally, a rep kit, which contains repair and replacement essentials for a still suit. So many things are needed for survival in the desert. These essential items are usually the contents of a Frem kit, a desert survival kit of Fremen manufacture, You'd likely also find a Frem Kit manual, the Manual of the Friendly Desert, which reads like a religious text. Every aspect of Fremen culture has been influenced by the desert. The Fremen are viewed by the members of House Atreides as the true power of the desert, as they seek to ally with them as powerful forces conspire against them. The Fremen have adapted over thousands of years to make Arrakis their home, this hostile environment not only produced a hardy, fierce warrior people wise to the ways of desert living, but their environment has also borne out incredible ingenuity and resourcefulness, as evidenced by the special application machines they've produced that show unrivaled sophistication. The culture that made these fascinating gadgets betrays depths that almost no one in the Imperium suspected. Secrecy is another survival tool of the Fremen, as underestimating them is a deadly lesson. While the Fremen are looked down upon by the majority of the Imperium, they fail to see that Arrakis itself produced a culture that also surpassed the preconceived limits of their humanity. Their advancement as a people is ultimately what the Imperium and its religious, social, and political institutions were hoping to achieve by eliminating the crutch technology had become. Humanity is driven, either by choice or circumstances beyond their control, to look within and push themselves to excel and advance their own natural abilities by adapting to and overcoming challenges. And surviving on Arrakis is one of the greatest challenges in the known universe. But I'm curious to know what you think about the gadgets and special application machines used and developed for survival on Dune. Which one of these devices do you find most interesting? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.